Freedom from scapegoating. Hi, I'm Angie. Thanks for joining us at Life Squared. Welcome to Life Squared, brought to you by the Perfectly Imperfect Network, from imperfect folk everywhere. We've talked a lot about the personality of a scapegoater. We've talked about how you know if you're a scapegoater. Now we're going to talk about how to gain freedom from the scapegoating. Now, number one, you've got to make yourself believe somehow, some way that your family has serious issues and that their behavior has you believing you're bad, weird, disappointing, or inadequate in some way. Hello, it's not true. Those attributes probably belong to themselves. So move on from that. Can you help them get help? You know, maybe, maybe not. Maybe just by them seeing your life and you moving on, will get, make them help. They can't get help if they don't want it. Number two, trust you and what you innately know. You've been mistreated. And what you innately know, I'll tell you where you find that, that gut feeling. That's what that gut feeling is. Innately, you know things sometimes you don't want to admit, but it's in your gut. And your gut really is rarely wrong. Number three, let go of your perpetrator's ideas that have you feeling shame, guilt, and self-blame. Why? Because they keep you frozen in time. You don't move forward. You don't live in the moment. You don't live the day. And this is your life, not theirs. Number four, Replace your old family unit with a new one. You go, how do I do that? Well, first of all, you can get married, have children. You can get roommates. You can get friends. There are lots of family units that weren't you weren't necessarily born to. But create a new family unit. I've, I've seen lots of families that are just stranger than I'll get at that just work. Make that happen for you. Number five, meet you, the real you. Not the one the family told you you were. Write it out. Who are you? I think they even made a song about that. Number six, stop trying to make it right with them. It probably isn't going to work. You're going to use a lot of energy that you could be using out elsewhere. In fact, we talk a lot about taking your pain and, and making it purpose. The energy that you can use trying to make things okay with them, you can use to create a purpose that will help people that want to be helped. Number seven, they won't ever apologize to quit expecting it. Never going to happen. And when you quit expecting it, that little hole that exists right there waiting for it, will go away. Number eight, if you must deal with them, assert yourself. Don't let them get by saying things, correct them. It's not going to make anybody feel any better, but you, I get that. Do it anyway. Number nine, a healthy relationship is unlikely to ever develop. Know that, move on from that concept. Number 10, Treat yourself with kindness and compassion, but learn that you're going to take better care of yourself when you turn that pain into purpose. And I just can't say that enough. Take those bad things that happen to you and make yourself a better person. That's what Life Squared's about. That's what the Perfectly Imperfect Network is about. We're taking bad things that have happened to us and trying to help others find their purpose. Number 11, learn to love you. Yeah, you can. You can love you. Just because you've been with people that maybe aren't capable of real love, you can still do it. You can still love you. 
Number 12, as I have been hinting at before, just break the cycle. The way you can break the cycle is take the pain, turn it to purpose, help you help others. But gain that freedom from the scapegoating. Please subscribe and like us. We appreciate it. But most of all, we thank you for viewing this video today here at Life Square. We really appreciate you joining us today at Life Squared on the Perfectly Imperfect Network. To get more content, please consider subscribing. If you have any questions or feedback, we'd love to hear from you in the comment section. Thanks for watching.